Hi, everyone. My name is Ludo. I'm a product manager at Google AI, and I'm here with my colleague Kat to talk to you about how to build with a responsible AI toolkit. Today, we'll cover four topics. First, an overview of what responsible AI means to Google. Next, we'll introduce a responsible AI toolkit. Then we'll illustrate how the toolkit can be used with a real world example. And finally, we have closing words for how responsible AI research and tool are in constant evolution. So let's get started. AI is being used around the world, from aiding physicians to detect eye disease, to suggesting the fastest route to an outdoor dining location. AI serves millions of purposes and billions of people daily. So it has become crucial for this technology to be applied responsibly. But what does responsible mean in this context? At Google, we have a set of principles to guide our understanding of responsible AI. We believe that AI should be socially beneficial, fair, safe, private, and accountable to users. Today, we'll be introducing the Responsible AI Toolkit. It's a collection of tools that helps put our principles into practice. We open sourced the toolkit last June and I've been adding tools and resources to it ever since. To better contextualize the toolkit, let's take a look at a typical machine learning workflow and see how responsible AI consideration can arise at every single step. First, when defining your ML task, it's important to wonder if your product requirements match your ML capabilities and think of risk for each user group. Given those considerations, is ML even a good fit for your problem? If the answer is yes, the next step is usually to construct and prepare the data. But there are many ways biases can creep into your data, either reflecting the real world imbalance or through the human decision you make during collection and labeling. Once the appropriate data set is checked and is ready, it's time to build and train the model. As you'll see in the rest of the presentation, there are methods and tools that can be used to train the model with fairness, interpretability, privacy, and security principles in mind. In the evaluation step, it is important to not only evaluate general performance, but also evaluate performance for more specific slices of your data. This will be reflected in the choice of your metric. And finally, when rating your model for deployment, you decide what people need to know about your model and its limitation to use this appropriately. The Responsible AI Toolkit is a suite of tools that help developers put Responsible AI into practice at all stages of the machine learning workflow. We encourage you to take a deeper look at our 10 plus collab tutorials, API documentation, and user guides on the Turntable website, which can be accessed through this QR code on the slides. In this talk, we'll cover a variety of tools from the toolkit for each step of the workflow. To do so, let's start with a real world example that would put these tools into context. Imagine you're the owner of a new global restaurant chain. This is what the inside of your restaurant would have looked like if it were open. Diners leave online reviews about their experience at your restaurant when they leave, nothing out of the ordinary here. But you may want to use those comments to assess customer satisfaction and see how you can improve for all user segments. The input to the sentiment classifier you're going to use are then the text body of the review, the review metadata, and any associated image that may be part of the review. So first, we need to scope our problem and define success. Here, the people plus AI guidebook can help us. But I won't expand on it right now because there's a specific I.O. session dedicated to the launch of a new version of the guidebook. You should go and check it out. But after this first step, we came up with two main objectives. We want to be sure that our sentiment classifier has high overall accuracy to predict sentiment because we will make business critical decision with it. And we also want to make sure that the classifier does not misclassify reviews based on sensitive characteristic mentioned in the review or on user specific characteristic, which can be language, geography. And to represent this notion as a metric, we're using false positive rate and false negative rates here, evaluated across subgroups. 
OK, now our model has a clear task and clear metrics to measure task performance. The next step is to inspect your data sources. And to do so, today we are launching the beta of a new tool called Know Your Data. Know Your Data is a data set exploration tool for ML researchers, product owners, and even compliance team to identify data set issues such as feature imbalance, biases, or low quality levels. Know Your Data first helps you visualize and explore your data sets based on existing data features. Here, for instance, we notice that reviews from the restaurants in the USA are overrepresented, where there are barely any South Africa based reviews. That's worrying because our model is likely to not represent the needs of South African users very well. And KYD also enriches your data with additional features so that you can explore your data set along new dimensions that were not previously available. Here, for instance, you know your data buckets the review image by level of brightness, and it's apparent that the data is not very well balanced. You can tell from the example on the right that is likely because most restaurant photos are taken in indoor settings. This is important to note. If there are only a few outdoors photos in the training data, and those examples are skewed negative, the model could accidentally and incorrectly learn to use brightness as a proxy for customer sentiment. On a different note, when using user-generated data, especially photos, it's very important to make sure that your model is trained with privacy in mind. In the next months, we'll launch privacy measurement in TFX. It allows ML modelers to do privacy attack against their own model and get back a privacy score. As you can see on the graph, there's often a trade-off between accuracy and privacy vulnerability. TF privacy can help you make informed decisions to mitigate potential shortcomings. I'll pass it off to Kat to continue through the rest of the Responsible AI workflow and discover more tools. Thanks, Ludo. Next, we will use fairness indicators to evaluate our model with fairness principles in mind. Fairness indicators allows us to compute common classification fairness metrics, such as false positive rate and false negative rate, across individual groups with confidence intervals. It is also integrated with the what-if tool to allow for a deeper dive into individual data points. We can use fairness indicators to evaluate our first objective, accuracy. We choose the presence of gendered words as the category in question. We wouldn't want the presence of these words to unduly influence the outcome of the classifier. Fairness indicators shows us that reviews containing terms implying certain genders have a lower accuracy than other reviews, which is concerning. Now we turn to our second objective, false positive rate. This graph shows us that reviews containing terms that imply certain genders tend to have a higher FPR than other reviews especially for the male gender. This means that they are far more likely to be wrongly classified as positive, which can lead to biased, misleading conclusions for your assessment efforts. We can use the Language Interpretability Tool, or LIT, to further investigate these findings. Here, you can inspect each text example in the UI. LIT also allows you to tweak the text and evaluate examples side by side a concept known as counterfactual testing. You can edit each individual point or use transformer functions to generate counterfactuals for a batch of examples. Let's try this for the data point selected here, a seemingly sarcastic negative review. Let's change the gender reference in the sentence. In Lit, you can edit a data point directly in the UI and add it to the data set and compare the old and new versions. The bar graphs show that the classifier considers the sentence with waitress more likely to be negative sentiment than the identical one with waiter, even though these words probably shouldn't bear impact on sentiment. Lit allows us to use saliency methods that indicate how much each word accounts for the model's prediction. The identity terms, waitress and waiter, are darker in color than the surrounding words, indicating that they have very strong prediction power. This could be one of the hidden causes behind the disparities we surfaced in fairness indicators in which false positive rate was higher for examples containing male gendered terms. We could do further probing by, for example, reevaluating after dropping the gender terms entirely from the review. You can use lit with your own model by installing the pip package lit NLP. 
Here, you define a lit model that can make predictions based on a given input, which is defined in the input spec, which in this case includes the review text and ground truth sentiment label. Now that we have a better grasp of what might be the underlying problem, we can use the model remediation library to retrain and improve our model. As part of the library, we partnered with responsible ML research teams to launch MINDIF, a technique that can balance error rates across different slices of your data. It works by penalizing distributional differences between these groups. We can try this as one of many potential remediation techniques on our model. We take our original model, Define the type of loss we want to use during MINDIF training and the MINDIF weight, a hyperparameter that defines the allowable trade-off between minimizing intergroup differences and maximizing accuracy. Then we create the MINDIF model and train the model as usual with the MINDIF dataset, which will specify which subgroups to apply MINDIF to, in this case, comments containing gendered identity terms. As you can see in our example, applying MINDIF reduced FPR for both the male and female groups and decreased the difference in between these groups as well. This can take a bit of hyperparameter tweaking to get right. I'll also add that MINDIF is not the only model remediation method, and it is important to understand what each method can and can't do before applying it to your model. You can learn more on the Responsible AI Toolkit site. The last tool we'll dive into today is the Model Card Toolkit. Model transparency is important for a wide variety of audiences, model developers who are making decisions about how to incorporate a model into a product, users who are impacted by those models, and overseers who want to ensure the model is working as intended. Model cards help to enable transparency by providing a framework that communicates the essential facts of an ML model in a structured, accessible way. We know that building model documentation is time intensive and requires specific expertise to accurately represent both the qualitative and quantitative details of the model. So we built the Model Card Toolkit to help automate card creation using ML metadata generated during pipeline runs. To see this in practice, we initialize the Model Card Toolkit as such and filter quantitative statistics that are automatically generated from the run and manually enter qualitative Model Card fields. Then we update the model card JSON template and export the document as HTML. Here's the qualitative section of our generated model card with an overview section, use cases, ethical considerations, and limitations. This quantitative section describes the distributions of our training and evaluation sets sliced by mentioned identity terms. And finally, we were able to produce sliced evaluation results on the metrics we really care about. That was a lot of tools. As we have seen, responsible AI is an iterative process. The workflow is not linear, as we often have to go back a step to reevaluate our data or model as circumstances change. There are many more tools than the ones we mentioned today in the Responsible AI Toolkit, which collectively represents the work of many teams across Responsible AI. We encourage you to check them out and talk about your Responsible AI questions at the new TensorFlow Forum. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions or feedback. Thank you.